Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you all had a good weekend. We are excited for another week. This is week eight, week nine, week eight, wow, of uh, the CCC. And surprisingly, today, for the first time in, in eight weeks, we're gonna be doing some different things. Even though we've done all kinds of agaves, we've done variations of this and that. Today, we're doing some things that I think are kind of unique to anything we've done in terms of the way we're serving it, the way we are preparing this particular drink. I will tell you in advance, it's, well, it's called the Brave, and you maybe need to be on the braver side to tackle this drink, or just be like ricey, which it's no big deal. But this is one of the boozier cocktails. We're kind of kicking the week off with, with some boozy. So the Brave, uh, and as you guys can see, if you're getting more and more familiar with uh, the various bottles we tend to use, is clearly an agave-based spirit. I'm using mezcal and actually sotol and rice is using mezcal and tequila but this particular drink also includes a verna one of our favorite amari and also some dry curacao but what's unique about this particular drink uh and i should back up it comes from one of our favorite bars which we've talked about in the past anvil here in houston which was really the first of its kind before the cocktail movement really took off and bobby heigl and his team there created this drink and in fact i have the original menu i think ricey has this recipe in a book as well and we actually have two very different stories about it, but it clearly is one of their first cocktails. And in fact, it was even called uh, the house cocktail at Anvil here in Houston. This cocktail is in my Mezcal book. I'll put the link up there. So if you guys are interested in it, it's definitely one of my favorites. And if you like Mezcal, it's a good one. But what they say about it is it's one of their iconic uh, recipes. So I mean, the recipe has been all over in recipe books, on blogs, you know, everywhere, because it is one of their iconic drinks. Like Jason said, it's one of their house favorites. It's, it will never leave their menu. It's always there. What's interesting about it, though, is that it's a particularly boozy cocktail. It is served at room temperature, not chilled, and served in a wine glass. So there's a couple of interesting things going on here. I think what, what is, sounds so enticing about this cocktail is, listen to this, expect flavors of roasted orange, nutmeg, clove, and smoke coming together with finesse and attitude. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> what more can you ask for? I mean, I'm using Sotol, which is a, it's, an, it's a cousin to tequila. It, is an, it does come from an agave plant, actually called a Sotol plant. Um, it's slightly different, whereas tequila has to come from a blue agave, a blue Weber agave. Sotol is actually more of a regional thing. In fact, what I had read was it actually comes from Chihuahua, the Chihuahua region. However, we do know uh, from our, our previous uh, CCC with John Cosgrove, that it's it's actually now spread into Texas. So there was that was it uh, Desert Door. Yeah, that's outside of Wimberley. Yeah, so clearly it's not just in Chihuahua, but it, it does have a different sort of different profile than tequila. Clearly, the Averna and the Triple Sec or the Dry Curacao are going to be pretty consistent. What I'm excited about is that it is not just an agave based drink that's got lots of citrus that we're shaking that we're adding egg white to, which we love all that stuff. This is sort of a grown up agave spirit served neat and just very clean. So oh, again, not when you're drink by the pool. Well, what I'll say is this book does specify the Del Magüe Vida Mezcal, and it does say once a Siempre Azul Blanco Tequila. So I don't have that, but I'm gonna use you know another Blanco Tequila. And while it does have you using Averna, it did say to use Royal Cambier, which um, neither of us have, but that is an orange liqueur that also incorporates brandy and cognac. So I think this dry curacao was a really good substitute for that, although it's probably not the exact same. I think, I think we'll, we'll get it. Yeah, I think the essence of the drink will still be there. Wait. One thing I find interesting is, and I don't know how that book is, I have the same book, but if this isn't the original menu, it's certainly close. But back when they did this menu, and I'll read what it says in here, it's pretty short and sweet. It says, Anvil's House Cocktail, only for the brave, always on our menu. So short and sweet. And then it goes on to say, not exactly Southern, but lots of Southern attitude. And that was actually Bible, Bobby Heigl's quote. But what's interesting that we just learned today is that on, on my menu, it actually calls for Sotel, not tequila. So I'm not sure, so the evolution of the drink when they added that, that bar book, which is clearly newer than this, they, they changed to tequila. At some point when we get together in person, we'll have to make it both ways and taste each one and see well, why. Well, compare notes. I like, I like not exactly Southern, but with Southern attitude. I feel like that describes me. <laughs> Shall we make it? Let's do it. We're going to build it directly into the wine glass, so that's easy peasy. Last cleanup. So one ounce of mezcal, one ounce of blanco tequila. 
We're so tall. Half ounce of Averna. Guys, this is one more reason why you need a burner in your bar. So if you have to have one of the Amari out there, there's lots of good ones. I think this is your starter. Do you agree? Sure. Quarter of an ounce of dry curacao, royal cambier, whatever orange you're using. So now my book specifies three quick sprays of Angostura. But assuming I'm the only person who's got a spray bottle of Angostura, you can definitely use a couple of small drops, it says. Don't have a mist or a few small drops will do the trick. I'm uncertain what three quick mists over the top of the drink mean. Not well, I think it, in it. I think it's, well, I think it's meant to both convey taste and smell. So I think if, you, if it's done right over the glass, someone's going to go in, someone's going to go out. No? It's going to make a big old mess on my bar. Well, then your bar will smell like Ango. Okay, there are worse things. Okay, I'm going to do it over the sink. Okay, I'm going to do drops here. Now my glass is a mess. And we all smell like Ango. Well, it's better than smelling like your dog, Angostura. Ha 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 ha. That's true. That's true. Garnish with an orange peel. And although it doesn't say flame it, don't you feel like we should flame it? Sure, why not? Give it a little twist. Light some shit on fire. Just, oh, there it goes. A little bit. Give it a quick bar spoon stir to incorporate all your ingredients. Wow, the nose on that. Oh, wow. Smell it. I think it's a good call, fire roasting it. It plays nicely with the mezcal. Like it caramelizes it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, actually adds a little sweetness, that's true. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Be brave, guys. Be brave, try it, let us know what you think. Wednesday, we'll be back to a much lighter, more approachable cocktail. Have raspberries. And I know that those right. go bad super quickly, but you want to get them. Especially if you have raspberry preserves, you can use that as well, but you'll still want the raspberries for garnish. Well, so. I'm looking forward to this. Me too. All right. Enjoy, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Jason.